when you own something that should be shared, it's a pleasure to share it. My name is Bruce Meyer, and I'm an automobile enthusiast. I love driving, racing, and rallying. And the car I'm running today is a 1965 Le Mans Bizzarini A3C0222. I was born with the mutant gene that creates a great love and enthusiasm and appreciation for cars. I define myself as an enthusiast. It's the experience and I don't buy them because it needs to be part of a collection because I don't think of myself as a collector. I go about it thinking I'm going to buy it and sell it, maybe turn a profit, I, it just doesn't work for me. This is not a business, it's pure pleasure. I am not a planner. I do not look at details. I do not read. I do not study. I'm just driven strictly by passion. I don't have a lot of cars, but the cars that I have really are meaningful to me. And each one has a story to tell. Because as far as I'm concerned, it's all about the story. Just like the Bitsarini, it's a fabulous story. Ferrari in, in the early 60s was rocking, and Chateau Bizzarini was the chief race engineer. Bizzarini did the 63 and the 64 GTOs, and they considered this the 65 GTO. When he left Ferrari in 1965, it was a works effort. They won their class at Le Mans, finished in the top 10, and Chateau drove it home. From Bizzarini, the car went to Remington Olstad who was an American actor. He had a cafe in Rome. He parked the car in front of his cafe. It was a big attraction. Then it went into the, to the uh, uh, Violati collection, where it stood for decades. And then in around 2000, Gregor Fiskin bought the car, took it to GTO Engineering, and here you have it. When Gregor acquired the car, he brought it over to this country and did a rally in the car. And I fell in love with the car at that point. And this goes back probably 15 years. And when I heard it won Le Mans, it, I mean, to me, Le Mans is it. And I just watched the car and followed the car for the years that he owned it. He sold it to another gentleman who, who tragically died in a road accident. So I actually bought the car from his estate. So this car is what they call a front mid-engine. So the engine is set way back. You actually work the timing and do some fine tuning through the dashboard, through the cockpit. So it, it, the engine is in your lap and it develops a little heat. But when you're experiencing the car, that's the last thing you're thinking of. You know, you're, the sounds, the performance, you know, the, just the joy of driving overcomes any obstacles of heat or uncomfort. So the car is very low, very fast. It's 190 mile an hour top speed. The design is very slippery and seems very simplistic, but it actually is very sophisticated. The slab sides are pure aero, and this is Bizzarini 
at his best. The engine is really not particularly complicated. It's a 327 Chevrolet Corvette engine with four very large, high-performance 45 DCOE Webers on it. And they ju it just works great. Truly, very few people even know what a Bitserini is. And that car just talks to me because the story of Giotto Bitserini is, is fabulous. You know, it's not like I've always loved the Bitserini and always tried to find, you know, one of those models, but this is the Bitserini. This is the one that won Le Mans. And perhaps the most original, unmolested, historic of all. This was our first track experience, and it exceeded every expectation for all of us. The sound, the speed, the performance, the comfort. It really, really walked the walk. And by the way, you don't win Le Mans by just looking pretty. I think if there's a mission that I have and that every enthusiast should have, we should be able to look back at what we've done and hopefully think we've made a difference and we've added something to the car hobby and the passion rather than take it away and hoarding it, but instead bringing it out and sharing it and really making a difference for future generations.